Welcome to the Smart Business Revolution. 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 Do you want a revolution? Yeah. You say you want a revolution. Revolution. The revolution. It's going on right now. Welcome to The Revolution, the Smart Business Revolution podcast, where we ask today's most successful entrepreneurs to share the tools and strategies they use to build relationships and connections to grow their revenue. Now, now, your host for The Revolution, John Corcoran. All right. Welcome, everyone. This is John Cork, and I'm the host of the Smart Business Revolution. This is a live episode, and I'm here with Dr. Jeremy Weiss. Dr. Weiss, how are you? Let's rock it. This is like right. a very tough subject today. This is not an easy topic because we're going to be talking about how to choose a name for your show or your podcast, which is a one that a lot of people struggle with. And I've had more than one conversation with people where it's something literally people have said that they have not started a podcast for like two three or three years, years because because yeah. they couldn't come up with the name of a show. So hopefully we're going to simplify it. We're going to make it easier for you. Um, I, I love doing these these episodes because they're a lot of fun. These are slightly different from the episodes that we usually do where we're featuring all kinds of different CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs. You know, I've had Netflix, YPO. EO, Activation, Blizzard, Lending Tree, Open Table, Axe Software. You've had P90X, Orlando Magic, Einstein Bagels. Who else? You Atari, RX Bar, Quest Nutrition. Some really interesting people. Some definitely. It's such a privilege to be able to talk to such great guests each week. And of course, this episode is brought to you by Rise25 Media, where we help B2B businesses to get clients referrals and strategic partnerships and build great relationships and do business development and do strategic partnerships and create content with done for you podcasts and content marketing. And if you have any questions about how to do that, send us an email at support at Rise25 Media, or you can also visit our website at rise25media.com. All right, so we're going to be talking about naming. How do you choose a name for your show or your podcast? And first of all, we should point out that this is in a B2B context. We're not talking about naming some kind of show that's going to be on NPR or that you're trying to build some kind of some, niche some audience. Some crime series show that is not our expertise. <laughs> Just put murder in the title and you're fine. Um, but yeah, in our case, murder in the title, eh, probably not going to help that much. So let's first break down, Jeremy, some of the bad names out there and the bad you know, the mistakes people make. Choosing it. Mistakes that people make. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess it's mistakes and then just how to avoid mistakes. You know, when you're thinking of a name, you know, look up the name to see if the show already exists. Some people choose it and they haven't even searched, you know, just Google it and see if there's any, you know, search the name you like in podcasts, see if anything shows up. Search on Amazon the name to see if any books come up because if you have the same name as a book and John, we were talking about this earlier, well, they're already going to think of that person in that book and not your podcast. And you also want to take other people's IP. And I'm not a lawyer. John actually is, but, but, um, <laughs> You know, this is a disclaimer that we are not giving legal advice here, but you should definitely make sure, you know, there are probably trademark, you know, they, you know, experts in this, that that's all they do, but just do some searches to see if people actually own it. You also said, you know, don't choose a name that is already trademarked or someone owns the domain or if you someone can, is on Amazon. Look that up. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 It's, those different databases are a good place. iTunes is a good place to look. You can look on YouTube, you know, different yeah. Typical search engines that you might search. Don't oh, don't name your book like the E Myth because there's a book on it. Don't name your book the Four Hour Work Week because Tim Ferriss had a book on it. So just stuff and people do. There's obviously obscure titles that someone actually wrote a book on that you'd be surprised. And I've done these searches, you know, John, you have too with clients where we look up blah, you know, you know, whatever the name is in podcasts, and oh, there's already a podcast. Or you look on Amazon, like actually there's a book called that. So you just have to be careful. Um, yeah. And, and then the other point we want to make is that um, there are also phrases that certain companies or individuals are associated with that maybe the phrase isn't trademarked, but it's definitely associated with that person. So an example might be like Michael Gerber, author of E-Myth, um, you know, real seminal business book is kind of known for the phrase work on your business, not in your business. You wouldn't want to try and compete with a phrase like that. Or when you think of the phrase, start with why, 
immediately people think of Simon Sinek. He's he's known for that. That might have been the, the title of his book as well, but it's kind of a phrase that he's known for. Um, so you want to avoid those sorts of mistakes. Yeah. And then also, if your name is too specific, the name of your business is too specific, don't use it. Like, let's say the name of your business is Smith's Roofing and Contracting. Like, well, maybe that's also boring, but but it's too um no no take not to take anything away from roofing contracting but you know you just want something general enough because if the person wants to shift the people they have on the show then it kind of paints you into a corner and you you brought up a good point John also about um names that if it's you know too specific is bad but you know, you don't want to paint yourself into a corner with something. Yeah, and you either. want the person to, you want people to feel honored to be a part of it, you know? So um, i give you an example. Actually, just earlier today, I was a guest on a show called Power Tips Unscripted. Sounds pretty cool, right? It's unscripted in the sense that it's just like a roving conversation and you're giving power tips. Ooh, I want to feel like someone's, at, my tips are viewed as very powerful, Right. It was actually the co- the name of the company was Remodelers Advantage, and it was a community and a company that helped residential remodeling companies throughout the United States. Now, if they approached me and they said, "We want you to be on the Remodelers podcast," <laughs> I might be thinking, "Why? I'm not a remodeler. Why would I be on there?" But by giving it a broader name like that, which has some cachet to it, people are honored to be a part of it. The other thing is, you mentioned the roofing example, Smith's Roofing and Contracting. Well. You know, a roofing company, maybe they get all their leads in their business and their referrals from realtors, interior decorators, architects. If they name it something using roofing or roofers in the title, then every person who's not a roofer who gets asked if they would like to be a guest on the show, it throws up another barrier that might be less likely to say yes. You don't want more barriers. You want to make it easier for people to say yes. Yeah. There's lots of resources on this. So we'll try and boil down some of the simple ones. But, um, you know, on that, that goes into the first, you know, one of the first criteria we look at when we're thinking and brainstorming with someone with a name, which is what is the result your company or product produces? So like in the roofing example, John, what you just mentioned is like, well, what do you do? Well, you cover people's house you cover i know you could do something you cover their butt you cover their family i mean something that what do you actually do um what is the the actual result you produce so an example also be like let's say you do lead generation like oh what do you do well we create a traffic engine for people so sometimes it's in the byline the actual subtitle of the company of what you actually do what were you yeah and uh we have we have another client that is a furniture company they don't name furniture in the title. They call it home because it's about creating a place that you feel comfortable in, making your home, your nest, your place of, of respite, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, those are, those are good, good tips. Um, what else? Um, what about naming? When is it a good idea to name a podcast after a business, Jeremy, yeah. I, I give an example that you gave once you were talking to someone and, you know, they said, you know, I just don't know what to name my, my podcast. And you said, well, how long did it take you to come up with your business name? And they said four years. And you said, use that. <laughs> so when do you say that it's a good idea to use yeah, the business name? Case in point, that's why some people, like you said, don't start their show for two or three years. They can't think of a name. So they've probably put a lot of blood, sweat into naming their company. So there's cases where we don't recommend naming your company, like we mentioned, if it's too, too specific. But there are cases in the if it's general enough, and it also some of the people name their company, which is the result that they do. So for instance, buy box experts who help e-commerce, right? They help people capture the buy box. So that's a great name for a show. It's it's the name of their company, but also is the result they produce, right? right? Another one that we help is Next Level, right? The name of the company is Next Level. Well, great. That's it, They help people get to the next level. So that's also a result they produce. So if it's general enough, it doesn't paint you into a corner with well, I'm not a remodeler, like you just mentioned, John, then why would I go on the remodelers podcast? But power tips, that's 
you know, that's great. So I think if the name of your company is not too specific and it part of it is a result you produce, go for it. Yeah. You know, there's uh, no right or wrong here. Right. And, you know, um, there's also our friend Andrea Houston has the lead like a woman show. You know, she wanted to feature women business owners and it's been a great networking tool for her. Now, that's not the name of her business. Artitude Design is the name of her business. Um, but who doesn't, you know, what what female leader, business leader, wouldn't we want want, want to be on the Lead Like a Woman show, right? It, it, right. It'd be an honor. And then another example is um, our client McCarthy Painting. They didn't name it McCarthy Painting. They actually did a little bit of tongue in cheek. They called it the Watching Paint Dry podcast. You know, watching paint dry, obviously considered kind of synonymous with doing something boring. You wouldn't want to call a podcast the boring podcast, but it's kind of tongue in cheek for that reason. Maybe Elon Musk would call it that. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he would. Um, but, you know, it also broadened it so that he could interview others who are non, not commercial painters or not in the painting, you know, field, so to speak. And also the bottom line, too, is guests aren't going to say yes or no typically based on the name of your show, unless you make one of those mistakes of making it too specific. Sometimes you could just say, here's the type of guest I'm featuring, and you don't even need to name your show. You can just send them, here's the URL where my show is. So it's not, I mean, it's important, but it's not, you know, it's not gonna just totally flush your podcast down the toilet. And you, by right. the way, you could always change your name. If you really wanted to, there's people yeah. who reband brand the name of their podcast and they keep the same show, but they just name it something else. So you could always name. I think, John, for the first <clears throat> five months of my podcast, I had no name. I had no name on my podcast. I just bought my name as a URL, jeremyweiss.com. And I'm like, hey, do you want to come on my podcast? I'm having top business leaders and I zero name because I didn't want it to hold me back. And I came up with my name months later, which is a good thing because you ended up changing your focus. Yeah. And I mean, that mine is general, you know, it's a general name inspired insider, but um, I just was like, I just want to get started and I'll change the name when I get to it, you know? So, right. Right. Absolutely. Um, yeah. 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 I remember we sent an email to someone, this is on behalf of a client where um, we sent an email to someone else who was going to be a potential guest on their show. And in that email, I didn't even mention the name of the show. But what I did say is that I wanted to introduce you to a client of ours who has a podcast. And he's interviewed uh, executives and leaders from Salesforce and Facebook and a few other shows. And there was a lot more copy in the actual email. But when he responded back, he said, not only is it a heck yes, I'd like to be a guest on the show, but also it sounds like I'd like to do business together. It was that positive a response. Again, not mentioning the name of the show because oftentimes it's really about positioning it and making it something exclusive where you want to be included in that club. And we previously recorded a episode where we talked about the season versus series dynamic, why we're advocates of doing series rather than seasons. So I'll point uh, all of our listeners here and viewers to go uh, check out that previous episode because that'll talk about how you position it in a way that gets people to, gets people to say yes to be a guest on the show regardless of the name of the show whether it's a results based word or a word you like the other thing we recommend is if there is a word you latch on to and you like a simple word <clears throat> then all you have to do is add then i always tell people it's going to take 10 minutes to name your show okay like someone let's say they like the word traction like i like the word traction well that can be synonymous with Gino Wickman and EOS, you don't really want to name your show Traction. Um, and it's also the name of a book. <clears throat> but, or, you know, for example, if you go Super Traction or Extra Traction, and we just did this right before, John, we hit record, and, we're, and you, were, you said, oh, like Super Traction and Extra Traction, you just threw a few examples. You could list like 10 examples of something to add on to Traction that it no longer has the connotation or traffic. You could do more traffic, extra traffic. Just put a word, if you like the word, a certain word, just brainstorm a bunch of words that would go on it. And then, you know, in 10, 15 minutes, just to make sure no one else has it, you can come up with the name. So um, I guess the next thing is, Absolutely. you know, you don't have to do this in a vacuum, right? And we're big proponents of involving other people in this, right? 
John. So one thing you can do is ask people, ask your network. You can call people, you can text people, you can post on social media, you can email people and ask them, you know, with, when we go through this with our clients, we have like a kind of a whole email template that is, that you can customize, but essentially you reach out and you ask them, what do you think I should name my show? And it's, it's good. And you've done this before, John, a number of times is if you have a few choices for them, so you're not just making them think of something. If you have a few choices, multiple choice, and you can leave a space for other and have them, you know, give you a suggestion, but just ask people. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny because you've, so, you've probably seen this before. You ever see like a zoo that has a contest for kids to like name the baby panda? You know, you mm -hmm. see that sort of thing happen. Well, why did they do that? Is it because they really need a name? No, it's because it's a great community building activity and it gets, you know, supporters of the zoo involved. It gets donors involved. Um, yeah, they realize that it's probably a long shot that you're actually going to be the one to name it, but it's a great excuse to build a larger community. And you can do the same with the name of your podcast is, is by reaching out to your, your, you know, extended network, they're going to feel a little bit invested in it and they're going to be more inclined to share it with family and friends and more likely to listen to it and all of that stuff. Yeah. And they're going to want to know when it comes out, did they name it what I suggested? Did they take mine? So they will be invested in it. So I don't know if there's any more I could just do. We could do a quick recap, you know, mistakes, look it up on Amazon, on Google, make sure it's not trademark, make sure there's not a book title, make sure it's not synonymous with someone else's IP, their, their sayings, make sure it's not too specific. Um, and then on the actual front, it could be results-based. It could be general enough that gives you flexibility. It could be the name of your company if it's not too specific. Um, you know, and if you like a word, then you can play around and, and add another word to it. Any, any others, John, that we missed? Yeah. And just remember that ultimately it's oftentimes the bigger factor is how you position it. Uh, once you get some good previous guests on there, positioning those in order to get future guests um, using series instead of seasons in order to get other guests. Um, and all of those are more important factors. Don't go and spend dozens and dozens and hours on this. That's not the most critical factor. There are other more important things that you should be spending your time on. But I think that's about it. So where I could think, people go to learn I more think, about? I John, we did an episode on how to reach out to any VIP. Or, didn't we do an episode on that? Which yes, we did. goes yeah. into what mm -hmm. you just said, which is it's the positioning around the message, not the name of the show. And I think we went into great detail on that. Absolutely. Yeah. So check that out. Check out that other episode as well. We can put it in the show notes as well. Um, where can people go to learn more about us, Jeremy? Go to Rise25. Check out. We have a couple videos there. You can go to rise25.com slash about. And, you know, John has a very impressive background um, who, you know, some people know, most people don't. But uh, learn more about, you know, worked at the White House, DreamWorks and, and many more. So check out our background there and, and we give some tips and sign up for our newsletter where we actually will give you even more tips. Exactly. Power tips. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you for listening to the Smart Business Revolution podcast with John Corcoran. Find out more at smartbusinessrevolution.com. And while you're there, sign up for our email list and join the revolution. 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 And be listening for the next episode of the Smart Business Revolution podcast.